wudu. Salah or the prayers. It's a compilation of the Kaaba, touching the noble Quran. Worship which a Muslim performs is not correct until one is pure. Using water on the limbs of the body in a particular order is known as wudu. As Allah exalted and glorified is He says, O you who believe, when you intend to offer the salah or prayers, wash your faces and your hands up to the elbows, rub your heads and wash your feet up to and including the ankles. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to a woman who was menstruating, Do not perform tawaf until you have taken a purificatory bath. Similarly, Allah the Most Exalted says, None touch it, that is the Noble Qur'an, except the purified. And wudu is recommended for any other situation. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, No one constantly stays in a state of wudu except a believer. Also, wudu is strongly recommended before each salah, even if it has not been previously invalidated. During the remembrance of Allah, during supplications, before reading the Qur'an, before sleep, and for a person in a state of ritual impurity, before bathing. Similarly, it is strongly recommended after carrying the dead, and after using the toilet, even if one has no intention of observing salah. Wudu is a means of attaining Allah's love. Just as it is a distinguishing mark for the nation of Muhammad peace be upon him, such that they will come forward on the day of judgment, like ghurra, muhajjalin, horses with white forelocks and white feet, based on the saying of the Prophet peace be upon him. My nation will come forth on the day of judgment, like ghurra, muhajjalin, horses with white forelocks and white feet, as a result of making wudu. So any of you who is capable of lengthening his ghurra, meaning his places of light, should do so. It is also an expiation of sins and misdeeds. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, He who performs the wudu perfectly, that is, according to the sunnah, his sins will depart from his body, even from under his nails. And with it, Allah elevates the ranks of men. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Should I tell you that by which Allah erases sins and elevates the ranks of man? They, meaning the companions, said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah. Then he said, Performing the wudu thoroughly, despite whatever odds, to make many steps towards the masjid, that is, to walk from a far distance to the masjid and waiting for the next obligatory prayer after observing a prayer. That is a sign of steadfastness. Before one does wudu, one has to make the intention in his heart that he is purifying himself for worship. He should start by saying, Bismillah. After this, he washes his hands to his wrists three times, and then uses the siwak or tooth stick when performing al madmada which means rinsing the mouth out with water three times. After al madmada Islamic legislation stipulates that the person performs al istinshaq and al istinthar three times, which involves slipping water into the nostrils and then blowing it out again. It is the practice of the Prophet, peace be upon him, to perform al madmada and al istinshaq with a single handful of water, that is, at the same time. Washing the face from the hairline to the tip of the chin and from ear to ear three times is another pillar and it also entails running one's wet hands through the beard. After this, the person washes his right arm from the tip of his fingers to and including all of his elbows three times and then the left arm in the same manner. Next, he wipes his head from the front to the back and returns after that to the front. After this, 
the person wipes the inner part of the ears with the index fingers and the outer part of the thumbs. And finally, the person washes the right foot to and including the ankles three times and then the left in a similar manner. All the above has to be performed in the stated order and also the limbs have to be washed one after the other. So one should not delay washing one of the limbs until the limb which was washed previously becomes dried. One of the conditions of wudu is that the water which is used should be pure and that one has to remove anything that might prevent water from reaching the skin like nail polish or any other similar substance. It is also the practice of the Prophet peace be upon him and so recommended to wash each limb three times except the head and ears which should not be wiped more than once. Another recommended act is to start with the right limb and to lengthen the place of light meaning that one should wash above the elbow and the ankles when performing wudu. It is also recommended to part the beard with the fingers so that water can reach the skin of the face beneath it and to rub water in between the fingers and toes. Another recommended act is to rub water evenly and thoroughly over the body parts to be washed and not just pour water over them. Being frugal when using water is also recommended. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Verily, they will be from my nation followers who exceed the bounds in wudu. That is, they will waste water when making wudu. And after the person has finished performing wudu, it is recommended to supplicate by saying what has been reported from the Prophet peace be upon him. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh meaning i bear witness that there is no god worthy of worship but allah alone he has no partner and i bear witness that muhammad is his servant and messenger and allahumma ij'alni min at-tawwabin wa ij'alni min al-mutatahhirin meaning o oh allah Make me from those who often repent to you and make me from those who purify themselves. And Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk Meaning Glorified be you, O Allah and praises be unto you. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but you. I seek your forgiveness and turn to you in repentance. Another recommended act is to pray two raka'ah after making wudu. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Whoever makes wudu like I make wudu, then stands and prays two raka'ahs of prayer without letting his thoughts wander, his past sins will be forgiven. There are acts which invalidate wudu. Scholars have stated in the books of fiqh or Islamic legislation that one situation that invalidates wudu is when anything is discharged from the two passages, referring to the urinary tract and the anus, that is, urine, feces, and the passing of wind. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Allah will not accept the salah from any of you when he is ritually impure until he performs wudu. Deep sleep or losing consciousness also invalidates wudu. Included in this category is fainting or loss of consciousness due to anesthesia, etc. Another act which invalidates wudu is eating camel meat. This is in accordance with the hadith of Jabir ibn Samura who said, a man came to the noble prophet peace be upon him and asked, Do I perform wudu after eating camel meat? He, the Prophet, peace be upon him, replied by saying, Yes. Touching the private parts directly without any covering also invalidates wudu. According to the hadith of Busra bint Safwan, 
where she said she heard the Prophet peace be upon him saying, Whosoever touches his private parts should perform wudu. So wudu is a wide ranging chapter which contains many details and etiquettes. One such example is when a Muslim after awakening from sleep wishes to perform wudu using water that is in a bowl. In such a case it is recommended that he doesn't put his hands in the bowl until he has washed them three times with flowing water. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Whenever any of you rises from sleep, he should not dip his hand into the bowl of water until he has washed them three times, meaning outside of the bowl. Certainly he does not know where they, meaning his two hands, slept. And when one has doubts about his wudu, we refer to the well-known rule that states that one should base any actions on matters one is certain about. So if one is certain he was in a state of purity, but later doubts whether he had nullified his wudu after that time, then he should base his actions on what he is certain about. That is, he should presume he is still in a state of purity. Likewise, if he was sure he was not in a state of purity, then he doubts whether he had performed wudu afterwards or not. He should base his actions on what he is certain about, so he should presume he is still in a state of impurity. When a Muslim performs wudu and washes the parts of wudu, either once or twice each, or some parts once and others twice and thrice, his wudu is correct. It is narrated that a Bedouin came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and asked him about ablution. He showed him how to perform it, washing each part of the body three times. Then he said, this is the ablution, and whoever does more than this has done evil, transgressed the limits and wronged himself. And sometimes a Muslim may forget and pray without wudu, but in such a case he must repeat the salah or prayer whenever he remembers. Whoever performed wudu and subsequently is stained with an impurity should just remove the impurity. However, it does not oblige him to renew his wudu. This is because such is not a hadith or considered to be from urinating or defecating or that which nullifies wudu. Similarly, a Muslim must be careful that he doesn't perform wudu improperly, meaning by not making sure water touches all the parts of the body which are obligatory to wash. As it has been narrated that a man performed wudu but left a patch around his feet unwashed. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, saw this, he said, return and perfect your wudu. Then he, meaning the man, returned and thereafter prayed. The scholars have also mentioned in their books that wiping the neck is not part of wudu, but when the need arises it should be done before or after wudu. And at the same time they warned the people to be careful not to read un-Islamic supplications like those specific to washing each limb or like saying Zamzam to someone who has performed wudu, so that the Muslim truly abides by the practices of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him.